God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 From darkness to light. From darkness to light. Acts chapter 26 verse 18 says this. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Do you remember the day that the light came on? I mean, do you remember the day that everything seemed to change? That you had hope? That you had joy, you had peace, and the weight of sin that seemed to be so heavy on your shoulders was just lifted, and you felt you felt brand new because you were brand new. There's an old song that says, I saw the light. I remember that day. I was just a child at Saxon Heights Assembly of God, but I remember that day that I trusted in Jesus. I remember that day. I can't say that it's been easy every step of the way. And I can't say that every day I've felt just like I did that day because there's been days I didn't feel like that. Amen? There's been days I, I questioned. You ever questioned? Come on now. Yes. But I'll never forget the day the light came on. I'll never forget the day. What a difference. What a difference it made to come from darkness to light. I want to talk just for a few minutes today about what light does. So you may want to take notes with this. You may want to write some of this stuff down. This is good stuff. Because the first thing I'm going to tell you about may, may not be what you're expecting. But I want to tell you that light is offensive to darkness. Light is offensive to darkness. Have you ever, you ever been maybe sick for three days or so? You stayed in the house because you were sick. I mean, really sick, laid up in the bed, you know. Everybody leave me alone. But then that one day you feel a little bit better and you get up and you step outside and the sun is bright and you're like, oh my Lord. It's got to be brighter today than it usually is. Or maybe you're in a dark room, you know, and your, your eyes have got adjusted, and you flip a light on. You know, sometimes if I come to bed really late and the light's been off for a while, I have to flip the light on to, to find my way to the bathroom. You know, April sometimes opens up her eyes and it's like, she gets a little angry at me. So like, what are you doing? So when your eyes are adjusted to the darkness and the light comes on, it's like you're, you can't, you, you're, it's offensive to your eyes. The light is. It's offensive to your eyes. It's hard to adjust to it. It's hard to handle it. Light is offensive. That's what Jesus was saying in John chapter 3, verse 19, 20, and 21. This is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. I found this quote. This is a really neat quote. This is what he said. His name is Dallas Willard. Almost all evil deeds and intents are began with the thought that they can be hidden by deceit. The kingdom of evil is built on lies, secrets, and darkness. It requires the absence of light to survive. Thus, for all, listen to this, thus, for all its fearsome appearance, the kingdom of evil is structurally very weak. Turn on the light, 
and the cockroaches scramble to go under the refrigerator. <laughs> Amen. You turn on that light and they scatter. Have you ever been in the woods any at all? Turned over an old stump, you know? There's bugs under there that don't like the light. And you roll that stump over, they scatter for cover. They run for cover. And that is what that is what the kingdom of darkness does. The light scatters it because the light is offensive. And when, when we're when we are controlled by the kingdom of darkness, it's definitely offensive to us when the light shines on us. Because light is offensive. Can I prove to you how offensive light is? Let me tell you something the Bible says. Everybody, everybody feel the atmosphere. You feel it right now? The Bible teaches us about tithing. Tithing is a principle that God brought into play before the law was ever written. So even though the law has been abolished in Jesus Christ, we are under grace. The principle of tithing still remains for us as believers. The Bible says in Malachi, it says, would a man rob God? And we say, how have we robbed you, God? He says, in tithe and in offerings, you have robbed me. Feel the atmosphere, how it just changed. Feel how it feels like the air's been sucked out of the room. Do you feel that? Is it just the preacher that feels that? What happens is, when God's light shines upon us, we're offended in some way. There's an area in our life that's going to be offended by the light. Oh, especially when the light shines on our money. It offends us. It's a place where God still needs to get in and work. Because God says to us, He says this in the New Testament, that out of abundance of our heart, you know, that he tells us that what, what we purpose in our heart to give. You know, we give cheerfully. We give freely. We give abundantly. And God teaches us throughout all the scripture that if he doesn't have our finances, he doesn't have our heart. He doesn't have our heart. Light's offensive to us. Uh, I've got all these other problems, preacher. I've got all these other situations. God doesn't have your heart if He doesn't have the things that are most important to you. Amen. And that light offends. Some of you are squinting right now. You can't take this, preacher. Go to the next point. <laughs> Go to your next point, preacher. This is a little, I can't, you know. Just let me feel the spirit, preacher. You know, go back to go back to grace. I haven't left grace yet. It's grace that it's grace that changes our heart. It's grace that causes us to do what we do. It's grace that 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 gives us the power and the want to in our life to just turn over what we've got to God and say, "Here it is, God. It's not mine. It's yours. I can't do anything good with it anyway, God. Here it is." But when the light turns on. The Bible says if we hate our brother, we're walking in the darkness. You don't know what they did to me. Just telling you what the Bible says. The light offends. The light offends. The light gets in there. Why do you, why do you think the rich young ruler walked off that day and he was not converted? The light... He found offense to the light saying that he needed to give what he had to the poor. found offense to that. There's people that find offense to the fact that they should forgive. They should, they should forgive. They should show mercy. They should love their brothers and sisters. Some people find offense to that and say, I don't think I want to be a part of God if that's what I have to do. The light is offensive. It changes us. As long as we stay in it, it's doing work. It's doing work. 
Amen. Amen. Light offends. Offends. Light also does this. The light reveals obstacles. Write that down. Light reveals obstacles. How smart would it be to try to go through an obstacle course in the dark? You ever get up out of bed and try to make your way to get some water or go to the bathroom and the kids have left something in the floor? Now don't you love stepping on a Lego block barefooted? Huh? I had those little circles on my foot for about a week. You don't know. You're just walking in the dark. You don't know. You don't know what's there. Because you can't see what's there. The light reveals the obstacles. <clears throat> now for some of us, that obstacle might be, I haven't given my finances to God. That obstacle might be, I have not forgiven my brother or my sister. That obstacle might be that I've got something in my life that's holding me back from the relationship I need with God. Listen to what Jesus says about this in Psalms uh, 139. This is what the Lord spoke through the psalmist. Psalm 139, verse 23, 24. Listen. As He speaks through the psalmist. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God speaks through us. When we pray, and, he, and he, when He speaks to us, He says, Search. Let the Holy Spirit search you. Let the Holy Spirit search through you. Let His light come in so that He can reveal to you the obstacles that are in your life that are holding you back from all that He has for you. You're stumbling. You're stumbling because you can't see your way clearly because you're in the dark. You need to come into the light and let God, let God's light do what God's light does. Yes, it's okay to first be offended. It's going to naturally hit you like that and say, this ain't right. But then the change comes in our heart if we ask Him. Breakthrough won't come without brokenness. Brokenness doesn't happen until we step into the light of His presence. And the light does what the light does. You know what else light does, though? Light reveals opportunities. Light reveals opportunities. Reveals our opportunities. I want to use a scripture Pastor April used this last week, and I use it all the time. I think it's a great scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are His masterpiece. You're His masterpiece. But it takes the light to reveal the opportunities. It takes the light to reveal those gifts that God has placed in your heart. It takes coming into the light. See, this is what's this is what's wrong. Sometimes we tell our children we've got good intentions. I know when we say this to our kids, we tell them you can be anything you want to be. You put your mind to it, believe you can be anything you want to be. You know that's not true. Because God has wired us to be. Something for Him. And God knows what it is. And when we come into the light, He reveals those opportunities in us and He brings to the surface what He made us for. Amen? Oh, I don't believe that. For, I'm telling you. I don't care how much I believed it or how, much, or how hard I tried. I can't be an NBA basketball player. It's not in my... Genetics. I don't care. It ain't happening. Not going to happen. 
And so I know what we're doing. We tell our kids that we want them to believe. We want, but what I need to do is, buddy, you can you can be you can be everything that God says you can be. He made you for a purpose. He's going to show you what that purpose is as you walk in Him. He's going to bring that to the surface, and you're going to be because God had a plan for you before you were born. He knew you before you were conceived, man. He He worked you, He molded you, He shaped you in your mother's womb, and He had a purpose for your life. But if you're in the darkness, you have no clue what you're here for. You have no idea. Why am I here? Some of you have asked God that. Why am I? Why was I born, God? What? What am I? Who am I? God, I'm a failure. What good can I do? Walk into the light. Put yourself in the light of His presence and watch what God can do. Watch what He can do. Because the light reveals the opportunities in our life. That's what happened to Paul. Paul was killing Christians, man. He he was he had a Paul had a zeal for God when he was doing that. He was just messed up. He had a zeal for God. He was that sounds weird, don't it? He had a zeal for God. He was killing Christians. Well, that's exactly what he's doing. But one day the light shone down on Paul. He went blind. It was offensive. He went blind. God began to do the work. And the light of God worked through Paul. And we're here at Life Worship Center today because Paul took the gospel to the Gentiles. He let the light do what the light does. Some of you need to come off the pew, get out of the dark corners, you know. Get out of those dark places and come into the light and give God a chance to show you why you were, you were brought into this world. Come into the light. Oh, but if I, if I come into the light, then I'll be exposed. That's the good part. That's the good part. Because every time I step into the light, I'm exposed. Every time I come to God and I get in His presence, I'm like, God, I'm so insignificant. God, I'm a failure, God. I fail you. God. But that same light that offends when you, when you come to the light, it, 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 it brings love. And God shows you, yes, you did. But look at who I am. Look at what I did. And so daily we come into the light and God purifies us and He cleanses us. And we don't, we don't leave those things in our life. We pray that prayer, God, if there be any secret sin in my life, God, if there's anything in my life, I come into your light, Lord, and shine on me. Shine on me. Show me if there's any wicked way in me. That's what we got to do. Don't stay, don't stay in the dark. You don't run from God, hide from God. He knows where you are. He's waiting to bring the, he's waiting to bring the change in your life on a daily basis through the light. So there's opportunity. But you got to get out of the dark. Light is overcoming. Light is overcoming. Did you know there's no darkness so great that light won't push it away? Did you know that? You ever been down to the the Soto caverns? You ever been down to take you on a little tour and go down in the in the cave there? And they, they tell you this is as dark as you'll ever, this is as dark as you could ever, this is it. You won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. They cut all the lights off and you can't see your hand in front of your face. But if you lit one little light, it chases away. It doesn't matter how dark the darkness is, the light overcomes. The light overcomes. The light overcomes. It doesn't matter how deep you are. It doesn't matter how far down you have sunk. 
light will overcome. You just need to come to it. You just need to come to it. You need to come. Listen, this is what uh, the Gospel of John says, chapter 1, verse 3, 4, and 5. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that He didn't make. Life itself was in Him, and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. <laughs> and the darkness can never extinguish it. It's been a while, Pastor, since I've been in church. It's been a while. It's been a while, Pastor, since I've come to God. Will He receive me? Will He restore me? Listen, the light will extinguish the darkness. The darkness can never overcome. Come to God with what you have. Come to God with all your failures. Come to God with your brokenness. Because as dark as it may be, it cannot extinguish the light. Period. Come from the darkness into the light. Come on, praise team. Come help me out. Uh, praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor today. Say, neighbor, I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm coming out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is the light. Look at him. Say, Jesus is the light. It's him. He's the one. He's the light. <laughs> There's no darkness too great. It ain't too bad. It's not too difficult for him. <laughs> they were having the Feast of Tabernacles. It's where they remember what God did for Moses when he led them through the wilderness with a cloud by day and a, a cloud of fire by night. You remember the story? He led them where they should go. He led them with a cloud by day and a cloud of fire at night. Not only did He lead them, but He also protected them. The cloud gave them shade during the daytime and the cloud gave them warmth. The cloud of fire at night gave them warmth. I want to tell you something. The, the cloud was Jesus. The rock was Jesus that they drank from. The cloud was Jesus. That was His glory also. And He led them. And so the Jews are having this feast. They're remembering. They're having a parade with torches, you know, symbolizing this is what God did for our forefathers as He led them out of the wilderness with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And Jesus spoke up. And I believe He spoke up loud enough that everybody around could hear what He was saying. And listen to what Jesus said as He spoke during this procession. He said in John 8 and 12, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I like how the Message Bible says it. It says, Jesus once again addressed them. I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. Jesus was making a statement. He was saying, y'all are remembering the cloud that led Moses and the children of Israel. He was making a statement, I am that light that led them. And I am a light that will lead the world. And you don't have to stumble around in the darkness anymore because I am here. I am the light. You can follow me. I'll tell you what the Lord has told me. Many times, if you're stumbling around in the darkness, you're simply not following Him. You're not in the light of His presence. We don't have to stumble around. Wednesday night, I told the people, I said, you know, sometimes you see 
way far ahead of you and you know where you're going, you got the vision, you know where you're headed, man, it's sometimes though you can barely see your feet. And every step you take is a step, a step of faith. But we don't have to stumble because God leads us. He is the light. His word is a light, it's a lamp. It shines the way for us. You've been stumbling around. Let's all stand. You've been stumbling in the darkness. It's time to come to the light. It's time to come to the light. Just as you are. Hey, God already knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. And I'm not asking you to come up here and tell me about you. God already knows about you. But there's healing. There's forgiveness. But you must come out of the darkness to receive. As they play something, sing something for us, going to wait just a couple minutes today. And I'm going to ask you to come to meet the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you need to rededicate your life to Him. These next couple of minutes, this is your time to step out. To step out from the darkness and come to where the light is. Jesus is here today to receive you. Will you receive him? We wait on you today. I want everyone to pray. Pray right now as they begin to play and sing. Father, we just come before you. You know the people that are here today. You know what they need. You know how they've been struggling. God, you know they've been, they've been stumbling around in the darkness. Seems like they're picking themselves up every 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 day picking themselves up Lord they're getting tired they're getting weary they have they're, they're still hiding from you Lord today we ask you Father we ask you that your light shine on them in Jesus name we thank you Lord we wait on you today to come <laughs> 